I think we're still missing the, the big move from the, uh, the Carolina Hurricanes. But I think it's smart with a day's rest, with a little bit of sleep, to reevaluate your first reactions and see if you still agree with them. And actually, I think yesterday... Much of the the panic, the sky is falling, the uh, chicken little had to do with one specific thing for the Canes. But everything else, you know, it's like you know, nine out of ten things go go right. Don't focus on the one. Maybe, you know, try to paint the full picture. I like what the Canes did on defense. I like what they did. Gosh, Spear coming back. Sean Walker, who, by the way, we're expecting to have on the show here uh, within 15 minutes. So we'll be talking to one of the newest Canes. I like what they did on defense. Going And and by the way, the actual pairings might change. Uh, you might move, I don't know, Chatty around or something like that. But Burn, Slavin, Chatfield, Orlov, Gostaspear, Walker as the six guys. And by the way, while doing that, saving money to spend on the forwards that you need for, for guys like Jarvis to get a long-term deal for some of the other moves you made – that's that's good GMing from Eric Tolsky on, on the, the defensive side of the ice. When you get Gostaspear and Walker for less than you would have had to pay just Shea, that, that's good GMing, right? That's the the you, you saw a lot of this with Gensel where it's like, all right, if you're not gonna give him that nine million, how are you gonna spend that nine million? If you go, all right, you're not going to give Shea the seven million dollars a year. How are you going to spend it? And you're like, well, for a little bit less than that, I'm going to get Gosh to Spear and Walker. Everyone goes, all right, fair deal. <laughs> nice doing business with you. Move on. There's a lot of good. I like some of the like rounding out the roster signings. I like some of the rounding out the roster, like the. The, hey, if you need a guy because there's a couple injuries or whatever, I like some of those signings. There's really just the one question I have. The one question, and we can phrase it two ways. One way would be, who's going to score the goals? Now, I can hear you going like, well, Ajo and Jarvis and Svetch. Top line, I get it. So yeah. here's a, here might be the better way to to, to phrase that question. Who is the second line of forwards? And where is the scoring going to come from that line? Right? Because let's 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 acknowledge a few things. One, the top line is going to be awesome. You've secured that. You've drafted well. You've developed well. You've earned that. Once Jarvis is on a long-term contract, and I expect that to come, boom, bada, boom, bada, bang, you're going to have at least three studs on your forwards for the next five-plus years. It's a great bedrock, a great foundation to build on. Let's also acknowledge that any any line that is centered by Stahl is going to be a line that is focused on grinding the opponent's best scoring forwards rather than scoring their own points. Not saying they can't, but I'm just saying that's going to be a line that is, you know, you can have a great day and leave that with a plus minus of zero for that line. Fourth line, if you listen to this show, uh, I understand the value of, of depth, but... I don't concern myself with fourth lines as much as some. I think if your top three lines are great, you can hide the fourth enough. There's not many fourth lines out there in in the NHL that can take advantage of uh, a, a fourth line that you might not be super confident in. So if we have all three of those things, right, you have the stud top line, the stall third line, and third line is just what you call it. It's really the the grinding line. And then you have the, the fourth line filled out with with – hopefully some solid depth that second line who's scoring the goals are you if you're putting kuznetsov there can you trust him to be leading enough of a point scoring line and not having those blips those moments where where you want to tear your hair out is kokiniemi on that line well he's paid to be that's not what i asked <laughs> if if it was by paid <laughs> Uh, is Natchez on that line? Great question. Is he still there? That's the question I have. That is the question I have. And because it, I mean, like goal scoring is like that's not a money ball stat. You know what I mean? 
It's not like, hey, we can go look for goal goal scoring because no one else in the NHL is aware of how valuable it is, right? It's not like batting average in the early 2000s, or uh, on sorry, not batting average, on base percentage in the early 2000s, where it's like everyone's paying attention to home runs and RBIs. Let's go get all the on base percentage guys. Uh, it's like you, you can't go and say like, oh, guess what? Free agency's winding down, and there's all this hidden goal scoring that nobody else is aware to look for. There's not a lot of options for solving that. If you're an everything but team, have good defense, have good puck movement, have good defensive forwards, have solid goaltending. We have everything but, and anything in that but is is goal scoring. It's not going to be a ton of easy fixes out there. So I, I can like most of what the Canes did. Carrier, I like. Uh, that's a forward that's signed. Uh, might even see him, as we hypothesized yesterday, might even see him a bit on that stall line. I think he fits. I think he brings physicality, something I think they needed. I like a lot of the signings. But it every, like, every time I say that, I am very, very tempted to throw a butt in the middle of that sentence. Yeah, who's your cleanup hitter? Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, man, we just signed the best – seventh hole hitter in the league and I'm going like well if you don't have a three and a four what are we doing here all right we got we got the the eighth hole hitter getting on base all the time it's nice it is nice Mm -hmm. hey he's gonna grind out at bats but throw make the make the pitcher throw a lot of pitches well and and yeah exactly that like by not having that second line score, and which, by the way, I know like many of you are saying, oh, you let Gen- like Gensel would have pushed maybe a Jarvis to the second line. You put Jarvis on the second line with Kuzi, suddenly I'm way more optimistic. Right? You put Jarvis on the second line with Kokiniemi, suddenly I'm way more optimistic. So what, like, it's, it's, you know, I talk about this in football all the time. You get a number one wide receiver, suddenly a wide receiver that was a bust is awesome, right? Because maybe they're they're not good enough to draw the number one corner, but as soon as you get the number one and they get bumped down to the number two, look at that. Now they're getting open. Oh, look at that. The safety isn't over the top, so they're making that catch. I I, I don't mind some of these guys when the, the defense has to focus in on a Jarvie or a Svetch. They, they've got to expend their resources over there. Then it's not as bad to be like, all right, Jack Jury, you're going to have to score occasionally, but here's your, your, your life preserver. Everyone's going to be focused on Jarvis while you're trying to score. That makes it easier for everybody. So I'm, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at yesterday for the Canes, and which, by the way, yesterday – is like the culmination of the previous month, right? Like is signing your your restricted free agents to uh, offer sheets and choosing which of your, your guys you want to stay in and uh, could have locked up beforehand. Like it's a culmination of a lot of days. I'm looking at it and just saying this. I like it all, but who's going to be your depth scoring? 